Okay, so I'm demonstrating the differences between mark edit 7.5 and solution types. So when mark edit was first released, 7.5 was released, there was a single installation type. Four. Single inst installation type for Windows, which was called consolidated builds. In the installer for the consolidated builds tool, there was both all of there was all the dependencies added for both a 32, 64 bit build as well as options to support either a user only or an administrator um, only installation of the application. The challenge that um, folks have run into is that in the cases where um, they have no administrative permissions um, and installing Mark Edit, getting Mark Edit installed will be difficult. Um, the consolidated build has some challenges because if a user has to install Mark Edit, before, mark at 7.5 before, it's very likely that um, the, the application, even for the user install, will require an initial set of administrative permissions in order to install some dependencies. I'm going to explain that here a little bit. More. So in the, um, the downloads build, you'll see right now there's a, a place where I put a page for folks to review, um, which is called preview build option or windows build options. And right now it's set as preview. When you click on it, you get to see the explanation of kind of how Mark Edit 7.5 and Solid works. So Mark Edit 7.5 is written not using the Windows.NET, not using the .NET framework, which is a part of the Windows um, operating system, but using what's called .NET 5.x, which is an operating system agnostic version of the .NET runtime. And so Part of the reason for using this runtime is that it supports the ability for Mark Edit to be portable between Windows, Mac, and Linux-based operating systems. Um, and given that that's, the, that's what I'm supporting, it makes more sense. So the challenge then is because the .NET 5.x runtime um, isn't a part of the default Windows operating system, the first time Mark Edit's installed, um, 7.5 has been installed. It's required users to provide administrative permission to install those runtimes. And the way that people have dealt with that, these are the two runtimes that are being installed. The way people have dealt, dealt with that is sometimes they have gone to this web page here, went ahead and included it in the link, and have downloaded these runtimes themselves and installed them prior to installing Mark Edit. If they're in an organization, maybe they've worked with their organization to install those runtimes um, on um, their system. And then when they install Mark Edit, they can select user only and then not have to provide administrative permissions in order to um, install the application. Um, but in those cases where that's not possible, where um, say like you work at an organization that, that has a very strict um, uh, process for getting new applications into um, the, the queue or even for managing updates, um, having that initial um, requirement of needing to have an administrative password in order to get those runtimes installed um, was problematic. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and provide a user-only installation option. This is what's called a self-contained installation. So one of the big changes to, to .NET um, in the 5.x version has been the ability to freeze um, the application um, runtime files and include those in the application. So if you are, for example, if you're familiar with uh, a lot of um, uh, what I consider like script-based languages like Ruby on Rails or um, in Python, uh, that are using frameworks for application development, in a lot of cases you can freeze um, those applications to a specific set of um, the, uh, the framework files and then distribute that application using that particular set of, of, of files. And then regardless of what the user has installed on their, their system, those framework files are going to use. So .NET provided that same functionality, the .NET 5.0 uh, functionality, and it included a handful of additional changes. So when you freeze, mark edit or freeze an application to a specific set of runtimes, you pick um, a bit depth that you're gonna support. So in mark edit, um, I've, uh, I've chosen for the user installs that um, the application will support 64-bit systems. 
At this point, I haven't decided whether or not 32-bit systems are required, partly from looking at um, the uh, looking at the, the log files um, in terms of, of what versions of Mark Editor are being, in, are being downloaded, as well as understanding that the reality is it's almost impossible to buy a 32-bit system. And starting with Windows 11, Windows will no longer be, be provided um, in non-64-bit um, iterations. So for right now, the user-only installation, the self-contained version will, will be built for 64-bit systems. So by doing that, that actually comes with some, some uh, benefits in that when the, uh, the application is built and the, the runtime versions are frozen to the application, it means that the pre-compile portion of the application, which occurs um, by default in .NET, if you think about .NET, it kind of worked a little bit like the way Java used to, and that the applications are compiled to something that's more like um, uh, uh, kind of an intermediary code um, that then the, uh, the runtime then compiles into machine code. The application actually is compiled um, so that it's ready to run. Um, so there is none of that, uh, that initial um, uh, pre-compilation of the uh, the, the run times and the, the, the application for use on your system. So there are some benefits to that. So what do you give up if you're using the only user-only installation? So the self-contained user-only installation has, has a handful of things that, that, that have to be disabled then. If you can't install an application with administrative rights, it means that MarkEdit can't install um, the, uh, the COM component library. So the COM component library is the programming library that users who want to write DB scripts or Python scripts or Perl scripts or applications against in order to access the, the Mark Engine or the Z39.50 or SRU applications or the link data functionality um, out with applications, third party applications or other people outside of Mark Edit, those won't be installed in the, um, the user only installation. And that's partly because in order to um, register a programming library in Windows, you have to have administrative rights. Um, there are ways to kind of work around that, but they actually open up some significant security issues. Um, the other thing, the other trade-off is that Mark Edit in user only, um, this kind of self-contained mode, won't be able to work with older versions of OCLC connection if you want to use Mark Edit's connection um, plugin. So the connection plugin allows MarkEdit to read um, the connection bib files and allows you to pull data from connection into MarkEdit, make edits, and then move them back to um, the bib file. So in 2.63, um, MarkEdit uh, requires a, a set of dependencies in order to work on 64-bit systems because connection 2.63 is a 32-bit um, application. So OCLC just released connection 3.0x. That is a 64-bit um, application, which means the dependencies necessary to interact with connection 3.0x um, are installed when you install connection. So that means that in the user-only installation for market at 7.5, the application could interact with connection 3.0x without needing to install any other dependencies. So that would be one of the trade-offs. Um, the last trade-off is, again, MarkEdit freezes the system runtime files um, for distribution so that you don't have to install any of these other dependencies. But that also means that the application is only going to run using those set of runtime files. So let's say .NET 6.0 comes out. Um, in, in two months, in the consolidated build, Mark Edit would run on whatever the most current version of the framework is. Um, in the user install mode, the application would run on the framework that's been frozen for, um, for, for interaction. Uh, so, so there's some trade-offs there. So let me go ahead and walk through the user install, the user-only install, so I can show you kind of what some of the differences are there. 
so this is what the self-contained application will look like. You'll notice it's smaller than the, um, the consolidated build. Uh, that's because the consolidated build includes all of the files necessary to run Mark Edit in either 32 or 64 bit and 32 or 64 bit systems, as well as all of the runtime dependencies necessary in order to run Mark Edit on the 32 or 64 bit system. Since the self-contained application is only targeting 64 bit systems, and only users uh, user installs um, the installation itself is small. So let's go ahead and start it up. So I can also talk about a couple of other chain, a uh, couple of other things that show up in the install. Practically, the self-contained installer is going to look basically like the um, the consolidated installer. The only difference is in the consolidated installer, the very first action that happens is it attempts to determine if the runtime files have been installed. And if they haven't, then you would be prompted for administrative permissions to install those runtime files. Um, since Mark Edit's user um, self-contained install is not doing that check because it doesn't need to, the first step you'll see is the, the welcome screen. And then we'll go through this. You'll notice you're not given um, any options to either pick a user or um, all users install because again, Marquette is only being installed as a user. This means the folder where Marquette is installing application, the application you'll see here is the app data roaming Marquette at 7.5 user directory rather than the program files directory. Again, program files requires administrative permissions so it moves the data into um, the designated app directory folder, which Marquette, which Microsoft has designated as the location where um, data should be stored um, when it's user only. You'll also notice if you installed the consolidated version in the past that the total required disk space is significantly larger um, in, the, uh, in the user only installation, um, 470 megabytes. Again, this is because unlike the consolidated build, which will make use of the runtime files that are installed on the application, MarkEdit must pull all of the runtime files that are going to be used into the application folder so that the program can run regardless of what other dependencies are found um, on the local system. So it means that the total space required for the application is a little bit higher. So we'll go ahead and run the installation. We get the same option program uh, for shortcuts. Um, because there's so many um, files that are, uh, because the, the, the disk size is larger, um, the installation may or may not take a little bit longer because the application has to extract um, a larger number of files uh, from the, uh, the installer. Um, and it'll be copying, obviously, more data um, as part of the process. Go ahead and wait for it to finish here. And it goes ahead and it will, per user, update all of the um, file registrations and stuff like that. Uh, so the individual files that uh, should be registered to mark edit will be registered to mark edit the same way it would work on the consolidated version. Uh, all right, so the program has been installed. So like the previous version, you'll find it inside the list. Uh, if you click on the program, um, it actually uh, will open uh, probably uh, a little bit faster the first time it runs, partly because that pre-compilation isn't needed. Um, and going forward, um, you'll find that it'd be, a lot of times the way Mark Edit works is that uh, the first time you run it each day, um, depending on how you your operating system or what other things are running, it may take it a second that first time because it has to do the pre-compilation step. None of that is uh, none of that occurs anymore because the application's pre-compiled for your um, your system. Uh, but let's see what the one of the trade-offs. So one of the trade-offs is that um, in the user install, uh, Mark Edit no longer is able to um, run uh, scripts against the application because that programming library that's required in order for that to work um, hasn't been registered because I would have had to have been an administrator in order to register um, that library for use with the programming languages. 
So does that matter to you? Um, for most people, probably not. Most people probably um, don't write programs um, or use third party tools that interact with Mark Edit, but I do know that there are, are some. And, and generally those would probably be folks that are working with Mark Edit um, in a organization where it probably would make sense to uh, manage the application um, using the consolidated build rather than the, the individual user install. So anyways, that's the differences. Um, they work, like I said, pretty much exactly the same um, from, from the uh, perspective of use. Uh, but uh, those will be the two options that will be supported, whether or not there ends up being a 32-bit only application in the user install um, as a user install only um, process. At this point, probably not, but if there was a significant enough reason for it, you know, I, I would consider it. Um, but right now, especially given that um, that especially that, that like uh, Apple's um, operating system, Microsoft has made the decision going forward that only 64-bit um, systems will be supported, uh, feeling pretty good about um, uh, primarily uh, providing for a user-only um, installation, uh, an installation that just supports 64-bit systems. 